Hello, everyone. My name is Adam Cross, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Southern California. And today I want to talk to you about partnering with your scrupulosity. This might sound like a weird topic. <laughs> in some ways it is. But how do you befriend your scruples? How do you partner with your scrupulosity? And I want to pose a question like this. If you have a friend who's really having a hard time and uh, who's really down on themselves and down about life, you just go up to them and say, you know what? You need to get your stuff together. You're in a terrible spot and you need to just get fixed, get better. Just take care of yourself. Just be better. Probably not going to go that well, right? For most people, that's going to be a real turnoff. It's going to be a real experience of rejection and negativity and hurt. But how often do we do that with ourselves? How often do we talk to this part of us that might really be worried about where we're at with God? Um, where we are at in a state of grace and all these concerns about even our identity as being a beloved child of the Father. And we're really worried about all these things tremendously. We don't want to offend God. We don't want to sin. We don't want to go to hell. And the response, you know, can be pretty negative. And yeah, this part of us can keep us from doing things we want to do. It can isolate us. It can keep us from the sacraments. It can make us afraid of the sacraments. It can actually make us push God away at times. So when I say... Partnering with your scrupulosity, I really mean imagining sitting down with your scruples and trying to seek to understand it. As I've mentioned in other videos, this is kind of a testament to parts work and internal family systems, and, and it can be really helpful if done with therapist or um, a trained professional of some sort, but to seek to understand your scruples. Why is it afraid of, of what it's afraid of? And what does it think about God? And, and to treat it as, as a distinct part of you. And to say, what do you believe about God? Or where did you learn this about God? Or what are these fears of being rejected by God? Where does that come from? So seeking to understand it is that first path of healing. And thinking about your scruples as a distinct part of you, right? A part of you that is good in the sense that it's it's still you. It's made in the image and likeness of God because you were made in the image and likeness of God. But it might be distorted in how it's dealing with and coping with issues of faith and morality and grace and maybe it has a childlike understanding of sin and hell and maybe it needs to be updated right maybe there's conversations to be had with a lot of compassion and understanding with your scruples to say hey this actually is what the church teaches i know it feels like this is what's true right i'm even asking it what do you think is true about hell what do you think is true about sin but then being able to update it and actually evangelize what is the good news of the gospel that the scrupulous part of you needs to know and understand. Partnering with your scrupulosity is approaching it with a tenderness, with a compassion, seeking to understand it, to know it in order to heal it. And usually where that's going to go is as we seek to understand it, as we build trust with that scrupulous part of us, and that trust is huge, right? We have to give space for it to speak. We have to communicate that we want to hear it, that we actually don't hate it, right? We see that maybe it's trying to protect us from hell, which is a good thing, but maybe it's going about it in a way that's not helpful. We can actually affirm it and say, hey, you're, you're helping us out a lot. I want to try something different. The more we do that, it's going to trust us with areas and wounds that, that need healing and that we, wounds that we can take to the Lord, that we can take further to therapy, but they might be wounds of rejection, wounds of abandonment, wounds where we felt like we're alone. And so the scrupulosity, even as a part of OCD, can be protective of these deeper wounds. And so by partnering with our scrupulosity, God is inviting us to love ourselves as he loves us, as he knows and loves us. He's calling us to know and love ourselves. And as we do that, we get to go deeper and we get to see the origins of these wounds and we get to pursue healing in that way and say, you know, yeah, I'm really scrupulous and and I want to update how I handle these things, but maybe this is rooted in a father image, right? Of Or a mother image of when I was a child, right? And that, this is how I related, or this is something that happened with my father and my mother. And God is calling me to heal. This is a wound, and maybe I'm protecting myself. So I don't feel like I did back then, again, as an adult. Maybe that sounds unparable. And so by partnering with scrupulosity, we get to, to understand why we're doing what we're doing, right? We're having that real relationship with ourselves. And then we get to, to heal it, transform it. This is kind of an intro, and, and, and maybe it sparks some thoughts on 
partnering with scrupulosity because I know scrupulosity can be so challenging. It can be so heavy. Um, it can be so burdensome, especially when we're trying to pursue a real loving relationship with Christ. Again, don't go the journey alone and to think about what does it mean to partner with my scrupulosity? Is it protecting me? What's its story? What's behind it? What's underneath it? How do I seek to understand this so that I can transform it? Because yelling at somebody to change usually does not produce change. It produces the opposite. It shuts down. It closes off. It gets worse. But compassionately seeking to understand somebody, well, there's a door. There's a door for communication. There's a door for understanding. There's a door to try something different if we approach with compassion and curiosity. So I encourage you to think about partnering with your scruples, to understand them, to affirm them, to help transform them as you look at those underlying wounds and, uh, and issues that are there. So leave some comments below, questions. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? If you want more research on, on any of these topics, I really encourage you to look into parts work, IFS, I've talked about those in other videos. Um, Dr. Jerry Crete has a book, Ladies of the Heart. That is a great read for Catholics. And there's a lot of great resources out there to learn more about interacting with parts of ourselves, engaging with these parts for healing. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time and God bless.